Why do people listen to classical music? Maybe you have even tried it, but you lose your interest after a few minutes. Personally, I really enjoy listening to classical music, and we think that with some time spent on it, it can bring you a very blissful and fruitful experience. I truly believe in the words of Benjamin Zander, who said that everyone loves classical music, but they just haven't found out about it yet. And that is why today we would like to share with you a few tips that will help you find more enjoyment in listening to classical music. Hello everyone, this is Unclassical Musicians, my name is Mateusz. And I am Michelina, and we would like to welcome you to our new channel. But first, let me tell you a story where the idea for this video came from. A few weeks ago, being at home, I was watching a classical concert on TV together with my mom. At some point, I could notice that she started to get a bit bored because the music wasn't so easy to listen to. And then she asked me, Mateusz, could you tell me what is so appealing in this music that you like it so much? And that question made me think, how could I help her to understand it better and to start enjoying what she hears without being bored? I believe she's not the only one who have struggled with that and my role as a musician and as her son is to give her and you a few tips to better approach it the next time. I realized that defining that answer helped even me to better understand the real purpose of performing the music. But let's get to the point of this video. For me, music is like a language. A composer can express his emotions through the piece that he writes. I approach every piece like I would listen to a story. This story can evoke certain emotions like joy, sadness, anticipation, fear or even anger. Knowing a little bit about a composer can help us to relate the piece to events that happen in his life, what gives us even more insights about the music. I could also compare it to a feeling when you read a book or watch a good movie where the action totally pulls you over and you're on the edge of your seat anticipating what is going to happen next. Of course, everyone can have different feelings and that's totally okay. This is another cultivating thing about music that it can impact us in many different ways. And there is not only one truth. We would like to encourage you to explore it and find your own way of listening to classical music. And let us give you our three tips on how you can better approach it the next time. Tip number one, name the emotion. What do you hear? And specifically, how does it affect you? Listening to music can evoke in you certain feelings, memories or emotions. Ask yourself, how does the music affect you? Is it full of nostalgia, bitterness? Does it make you very anxious or when it doubts you in rage? Music affects us in so many different ways. We only need to be more aware about it. And I'm sure with some practice, you can become even more sensitive to these emotions. Let me give you an example. So the first themes of the Dvorak's famous Symphony No. 9, in the first movement, it is dark, a little mysterious. Yet you can also sense the excitement for an adventure. In the second movement, there are these long, beautiful, calm melodies. In the fourth movement, it is grand and triumphant. Imagine walking down a row of fanfare trumpets and brasses. Okay, now it's your turn. Try to name the emotion you feel while listening to these short excerpts. Please leave your answers in the comments below. We are very, very curious to see your answers as each of us experience music in a different way. The second tip would be to research and try to read something about the composer and the piece that you are going to listen to. What happened in composer's life at that time? Was it written for someone? Or maybe the title can tell you what is the piece about? Having a bit of knowledge can help you understand the message of the piece tremendously. Generally, even the name of the movements can give us an idea about the piece. For example, in Dvořák, the first movement is entitled Scherzo. Literally translated from Italian as scherzo is a joke. 
You can expect this movement to be lively in a triple meter. See, you can learn so much about the piece beforehand, or even from program notes that you can read just before the performance. Tip number three, visualize. Paint a story in your head. If you would see this music in a movie, what could a movie be about? Or think about it like an impressionistic painting. Try to imagine what this music could represent. Sometimes I have a whole adventure happening in my head. I imagine cowboys, spaceships, lightsabers, guns. And this is usually paired with exciting, fast-paced, high-tension music. Other times, I imagine being at the beach, looking at the waves, some small, some bigger, perhaps some animals running around. They're not doing much, but they're happy. With another type of music, I imagine someone crying their eyes out over a loss of a friend or a family member, and then acceptance after the sad period. One thing that helps is when you're watching any movie or TV show, Try focusing on the music and decipher why the music is being used in each situation. Perhaps to create tension for the plot? Or to highlight the beautiful nature landscapes on the screen? Go out with your imagination. Another tip that could help visualize the music is to go to a museum near you with a classical music playlist set on random. Listen while you enjoy the art. Does the music match what you see? If not, skip the next track. Does the next one match? Why? So those are our tips on how to find enjoyment in listening to classical music. If you are a musician, we're very curious to how you would approach this question of how to listen to classical music. And if you are not, try those tips and let us know in the comments down below. If you like the video, please give us a thumbs up. And for more classical music content, you can subscribe by clicking the big red button below. Stay, Stay in tuned. tuned! See you next time! Peace!